So, welcome to episode 27. And in this episode, we will still talk about the accounting for debt restructuring under, of course, the modification of terms, which is again, the concept is if your company has an unsettled debt that it cannot pay on time, then you can ask the creditor for a modification of the principal payment, like reducing the principal payment, or you can ask the creditor to modify the due date or the maturity term, or you can ask the creditor for the reduction of interest rate. And you can also ask for all of those, like you can ask the creditor to decrease the principal payment and then extend the maturity term. And of course, you can also ask him or her or it, if it is a company, for reduction of interest rate. So that's the concept of modification of terms. So in the past episode, we finished the accounting for debt restructuring with no substantial modification. So you can watch it before you watch this video. So its link is on the description below. And if you did that already, then let's start. So again, our topic is debt restructuring modification of terms with substantial modification. So let's start this lecture with an illustrative problem again. So we have here a familiar timeline again. And these are the liability balances of the debtor baby G. Of course, this will be the balances if he will pay these amounts. This 1.5 million to 1.1 million. Okay? Now, let's assume again that BBG only paid up to here at the end of the third year because BBG has suffered a financial problem. Okay? And because of that financial problem, BBG company asked the creditor that he will only pay or it will only pay the remaining principal balance of 2 million at the end of year 7 without paying any interest at all. Okay? So, let's assume further that the creditor agreed to this new arrangement. Okay? Because this is actually possible, especially if the debtor is left only with two choices. So, choice number one, uh, accept the reduced payment or choice number two, receive nothing at all. So, you will realize that if you continue studying until the accounting for quasi-reorganization and corporate liquidation. So, my point is, it is very possible that the creditor will accept the reduced payments instead of receiving nothing. Okay? So, because of that, these two payments of 1.2 million and 1.1 million will now never happen. Okay? So, the question is, what's next? The next thing that we should do is to get the present value of the revised payment, which is this 2 million, times 1.13, where this 0.13 is again the previous effective rate used by BBG in year 1 to year 3. Okay? So, it's this one, right? And then, we need to raise that to the power of negative 4 because this 2 million will just be paid at the end of year 7, right? And we are still here at the end of year 3. So we need to go back by 4 years. So the N is 4. And we raise it to negative 4 or negative N. Okay? Now, the present value factor, if you simplify this, is 0.61331873. Now, let's multiply it with the 2 million, and we will get the present value already of 1,226,635. Okay? So, after that, let's compare this old balance of the loans at the end of year 3, which is this one, to get their absolute difference. Okay? So, the difference of these two is 696,791. And again, it will become a numerator. And then, the denominator is the old balance. So, 
696,791 divided by 1,923,426 and we will get 0.3623 or 36.23%. Meaning, the difference is 36.23% of the old liability. Which brings us to the conclusion that there is actually substantial modification. Because again, the difference is more than 10% of the old liability. Okay? Now, the question is, what happens next? So stay tuned. So, let's go back. And since we concluded already that there is a substantial modification because the answer here is more than 10%, then the effect is the old liability balance, which is this one, will now be cancelled. And we are going to change the balance of BBG's loans payable to this present value of the new payment, which is 1,226,635. Okay? But in order to do that, we need to make a journal entry, which will cancel the old liability. So, we need to debit the old liability by 1,923,426 again to cancel that. Okay? And then, to establish the new liability, we need to credit the new loans payable for 1,226,635. Okay? So, as you can see here, it's not balanced, right? So, we need to credit an account called the gain on extinguishment of debt or gain on debt restructuring, which is the difference of these two, which is 48,361. Okay? So, we did this entry because the credits is lacking earlier. But, you need to remember that there are cases that the debit amounts are the ones lacking. So, if that's the case, instead of this gain, we need to record a loss on debt restructuring. Okay? Now, let's move forward. Another effect of having a substantial modification of debt is that you get to use the previous effective rate, which is, in our case, it's 13%. And you don't need to interpolate anymore. It's nice, right? So, we can continue already. So, 1,226,635 times 1.13 equals 1,386,098, which is already the balance at the end of year 4. So, there are no deductions because the payment will only happen at the end of year 7, right? Now, how about the journal entry? The entry is simply credit loans payable because as you can see, it increased. Your loans payable has increased. Baby G's uh, loans payable increased, right? So the increase is 159,463 and that will be credited to loans payable account. But what about the debit? Of course, we debit interest expense for the same amount. So, it's very easy, right? So, now, 1,386,098 times again 1.13 equals 1,566,291. Now, the difference of these two will be recorded again as debit interest expense and credit loans payable of 180,193. So, next, 1,566,291 times 1.13 again, and we will have 1,769,909. And again, the difference of these two will be debited to interest expense and credited to loans payable, which is 203,618. Okay? And lastly, we have to multiply this with 1.13 for the last time. And we will get 1,999,997. And since this is the payment date of the 2 million, we need to deduct the 2 million here. And we will have 
negative 3. And again, this is supposed to be 0 here. But because of rounding off, we have negative 3. Which is fine. Because again, it's very immaterial. But, in order to be safe, let's change this to 2 million. So that the balance of baby J's loans after payment of this will become 0. And actually, it's gonna be weird if the loans payable of baby G becomes negative 3, right? So, at this point, Let's get the difference of this 2 million and this 1,769,909 and record it as debit interest expense and credit loans payable of 230,091. And as for the payment for this 2 million, we have to debit loans payable 2 million to reduce the balance of the liability to zero and then credit cash. And that's it. Those are the entries and this is the completed timeline for the modification of terms with substantial modification. Okay? So, let's end this video now. So, in the next video, we're going to talk about asset swap, equity swap, and the forgiving of debts by the creditors and the possible questions on accounting for debt restructuring. Okay? So, stay tuned. And if you learned please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and select all to be updated on my next videos. So thank you again for watching, and see you on the next one.